I'm so thankful for the Word of God, thankful for the clarity that it brings to our lives, thankful that when we spend time reading the Word, the Holy Spirit makes that Word come alive to us so that we can hear it and understand it, apply it to our lives, and the change that it makes in us is truly a marvelous thing that the Lord has done. Uh, we can't take credit for ourselves. We can't uh, boast of anything that we have done. It's all about what the Lord has done. I'm thankful for that. Uh, good morning. Our reading today is in Deuteronomy 19 through 21 and Galatians chapter 3. And the verse that, that uh, I want to plant today, the seed that is here, is in, in Galatians chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. And I've entitled this, The Faithful God. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are the blessed with believing Abraham. There is uh, so much to unpack from this verse that is so, so important. But here's the thing. This, this business of faith begins with Abraham hearing and believing the gospel. What he hears is that even the Gentiles would hear and believe. And that was spoken before there was even the designation of the Gentiles, of people called the Gentiles. But the Word of God foresaw this uh, whole scenario. Uh, and uh, Abraham called was called the father of faith as a result of this. Uh, he was saved by faith just like we were saved by faith. The result is that those who are of faith, that is, those who have believed the gospel, are the children of promise, or we could say the children of Abraham. It's foolish to think that the blessing of Abraham really has anything other than the blessing of his seed, that, that is, Jesus. It, there, there's really nothing else to, uh, to bring that point to. Uh, it's, it is through his finished work on the cross that the blessing of Abraham comes to the one who puts his faith in Christ. The curse that is removed is the curse of death and separation, not the consumption of one's health and wealth. It's utter nonsense and completely poor practice to read into this passage a doctrine that the scripture really does not support in any way, shape, or fashion. So what do we do about that? Well, we continue to preach the word, the truth of the word of God. We continue to study to show ourselves approved. Because why? Well, because God is a faithful God. His word is true, and we can hold on to his word. It's so important that we do that, especially in the days that we are living in. And, you know, that may sound like a broken record. That sounds like something I say all the time, but it doesn't change the truth of it. It's still true. Do we need to be reminded of that? Well, of course we do. We need to do that and walk by faith and not by sight so that we can be the people that God's called us to be. It's so important, dear friends, that we hold on to the promises of God, that we look diligently into the scriptures to see if the things that are being said are true so that we can stand by faith in the days that we are living. Amen. Well, praise the Lord for that. And may the Lord richly bless you. And if this is a blessing, uh, like us on Facebook, share it on your page, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't. All those things help us to get the word of God out. So praise the Lord for that. And, and thank you for your uh, watching and your time spent together with me. Love it. Thank you so much. May the Lord richly bless you.